again, here we are at solving one step equations. Again, this would be like a great paper if you could actually have it, like I could copy it and give it to you, but I cannot. So uh, you're just gonna write down, I set up the beginning of it, solving one step equations is the title, and then you want something that says goal, how, and move. So pause if you need to and catch up with that, and then uh, hit play to continue. So the goal when we're solving one step equations, or sometimes they're called single step equations, is to get the variable by itself. And that's what we, that's like what we're doing when we're solving for x or solving for a or something like that. We want to get the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. So how do we do that? We're going to use inverse operations. You can't write and talk at the same time. We're going to use inverse operations to kind of like undo whatever was done to the uh, variable to begin with. So like plus and minus, multiply and divide, or square and square root, okay? And uh, what we're trying to do is move things away from the variable because that's how we're gonna get it by itself is if we take everything away from it, move everything away from it, then it will be left alone by itself on one side of the equal sign. So this is like stuff that would have been in the sixth grade unit on algebra um, that we didn't get to at the end of last year and I mentioned it feels like a really long time ago I mentioned when we started our seventh grade one that there might be some stuff that um, I have to like go back and kind of teach our stuff what we've been doing in seventh grade are two-step equations not one-step equations but it's good you know to have this background and to have this in your book <clears throat> okay so for example I'm gonna do a couple examples here and you can use these like as anchor problems to come back and take a look at them. If you see problems similar to them ever that you need to um, solve, you can go back and look at these. So let's start with the uh, most basic kind. If we go over here, remember that um, we talked about how to recognize addition. So we're going to do some addition examples. Let's say we had something like n plus 3 equals 7. Okay, I can recognize that that's an addition problem because it has a positive number here, the plus sign in front of it. Another example that we will also do in this video is eight minus n equals five. And that might seem weird because that's a subtraction sign, but this is an addition, this is a addition that we're undoing. This is a positive number here because there's no sign in front of it. So uh, we're gonna solve these the same way, even though they look like different kinds of problems. So the first step is to um, use inverse operations, undo whatever was done to n. n had three added to it, and we want to undo that. So instead of adding three, the opposite of that would be taking three away. And just like you learned with your hanger diagrams, when you take three away from one side, you have to take three away from the other also to keep it balanced. So n plus three minus three, this all becomes like one expression here. The plus three and the minus three cancel each other out, they equal zero, and you get just plain old n. And over here, seven minus three equals four. So n equals four. You can go back and check that by putting four in place where n was. So we'll say four plus three equals seven. I took the four, put it where the n was, and I wrote that expression or that equation out. And is that true? Yes. So I have the right answer, n equals four. You probably just could like look at that and know that it equals four, but these are the steps for how you would solve it. Okay, so similar kind of problem. Uh, we have an n. Actually, we have a negative n and eight was added to it. And we need to undo that by taking away the eight, getting rid of the eight, undoing what was done to n. 
and what we do to one side, we do to the other as well. So here we have 8 minus n minus 8. Well, 8 minus 8 is nothing, so we just have the regular plain old negative n here. Don't lose that negative sign. Make sure you remember to bring that with you uh, when you come down here to the next line. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And remember that we can think of negatives as opposites also. So like the opposite of n is the opposite of 3. So then that would mean that n would be 3. Like to, to turn this one positive, I turn that one positive too. And again, I can double check by putting 3 where n was in the equation. 8 minus 3 equals 5. Is that true? Yes. So I know my answer is right. We're going to go over some more examples in the next video.